here at Dallas Cowboys headquarters. You get the mood is, it's pretty light around here. People are very happy, but I'm gonna take you back to week one when the sky was falling because the Cowboys lost, they couldn't score a touchdown and they lost their quarterback, Dak Prescott. How much credit does coach Mike McCarthy deserve now that the Cowboys have rattled off two back-to-back -back wins? Well, to paraphrase him, oh, God forbid, everybody give me credit now. <laughs> uh, and I, I posed the question to him after the press conference yeah. about his thick skin. Mm -hmm. he'd, been, he'd been doing this for a long time. Yeah. He's been not getting credit for a long time, uh, having coached with the Packers, at the Packers, where uh, Aaron Rodgers yeah. got a lot of credit for their success. Right. So McCarthy's kind of used to it. But I do think there is a subtle truth inside of his joke because what he told me afterwards is i'm just joking uh uh it's no big deal yeah. I, I urge you to not make a big deal of it and then he said something about some before the press conference the pr director yeah. and said something and he saw tad prescott's tweet right something uh, along those lines but it but it's not nothing yeah uh you you're you're been doing this you know you're a, you're a lifer yeah you've had a lot of success doing this everybody uh, wants your head when you do anything wrong right they, they lost the game yeah in week one and it was all over with for the coach yeah and he was going to be replaced by dan quinn or kellen moore or jimmy johnson or <laughs> sean payton and i've been saying this all off season regarding the hot seat you, you can't have a hot seat in April. Yeah. You can't have a hot seat in August, and you probably shouldn't have one in week one. Mm -hmm. I think Mike McCarthy is joking. Mm -hmm. I think he's right to urge me to not make a big deal out of it. Yeah. But I think deep down inside, wouldn't everybody like a little credit <laughs> for success? They are playing without Dak Prescott, and yeah. they're 2-0 and o having upset two teams in a row. Yes, the head coach would like just a smidge of credit. And the head coach also commented that he really likes your shirt. Today. Well, who doesn't? Uh, you, you can get this in the Uncle Fish store. It's uh, available across the country. Speaking of credit, let's talk about Cowboys wide receiver C.D. Lamb, who deserves some credit after those horrendous drops in the first half of last week's game. And then to come back and make that one-handed diving catch in the end zone to help the Cowboys beat the Giants. Are you impressed with CD and his mentality? We don't have the luxury anymore of getting to be fanboys or girls, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you can't uh, have a personal feeling about a person. Yeah. And when CD Lamb uh, dropped that ball, and I, I think, by the way, if you look at the replay, like his foot, like he stumbled just a little bit. Yeah. I just think it, it threw his body rhythm off. Yeah. Not to make an excuse for a ball that he's just got to catch, and yeah. he knows that. Um, oh, he knew that. Yeah. <laughs> but, but then just on a personal man to man level, mm -hmm. I'm like, if he doesn't get an opportunity mm -hmm. to undo that, yeah. it, that's going to stick to him. Mm -hmm. And the public's going to do it to him, and the media's going to do it to him, and hopefully he doesn't do it to himself, but these things happen. The Cowboys, to their credit, mm -hmm. didn't change their one thought. Yeah. Uh, CeeDee Lamb is still a superstar wide receiver. He's still on the level with anybody, and, and we're not going to not go to him. Now, I said during the game on Twitter at Fish Sports, somebody might want to go on the sideline and play catch with him. Just like to remind him, you know, this you don't, is how you don't, you do it. yeah, you have 10 feet, you know, you don't catch it like that, you know, you're not have boxing gloves on, yeah. but I think they did it even more smartly. They just kind of patted him on the back and, and said, uh, You'll we'll, get it we'll next see time. you next play. Yeah. Um, and the next thing you know, he makes a play that justifies what Dak Prescott has said about him, which is by the time this is all over with, there's going to be Devonte Adams and Cooper cup and Jefferson in Minnesota and C.D. Lamb's gonna be in that class. Yeah. For one night minus one or two catches, he kind of was. Mm. One of the hottest topics here at Dallas Cowboys headquarters is of course an injury update because that's what happens when your starting quarterback is out. So Dak got his stitch removed from his right throwing hand. What are you hearing about his maybe availability and when that could be? Yeah, and we were in the locker room uh, in New York with Dak and there's just a few of us who were saying, yeah, uh, don't make a big deal of stitches and you yeah. could have done it he said to uh, i can uh, guarantee you i could have not done that you, you, you wouldn't have had the stomach for it yeah exactly okay i mean he really did say it's just like hey. and you're done nope doesn't matter uh, do it. <laughs> but then then comes the next part where it's really gripping the football now he goes um, and he goes i can grip it yeah yeah with four and a half fingers yeah so as we get past midweek here at the star mm -hmm. Dak prescott is still not really practicing mm -hmm. but michael gallup is mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, in the last couple of days, he's done Michael Gallup things. Yes. Uh, fade, fight for the ball, toe tap, all the good stuff. He should be good to go for week four against Washington here at AT&T Stadium. They are talking about Jerron Curse being yeah. good to go too. Thursday is a full load day for him. If he wakes up Friday morning, 
and feels fine, then he's a go. And that's, that's critically important. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan Quinn the other day said, yeah, we, we, we would be able to, if he's healthy, we'd fit him back in. Yeah, you think? <laughs> yeah, probably. You think Captain Obvious, Quinn? Yeah, I think you would. Uh, he is the do everything guy. Yeah. Not unlike Micah Parsons in some ways on this defense. And then Dalton Schultz, yeah. Thursday full load too. Um, because Dalton Schultz may have an injury similar to what Ezekiel Elliott had last year, back of his knee, yeah. not debilitating, doesn't mean he can't run, but maybe a step slower, mm -hmm. that's something to monitor. If Dalton Schultz, if he, if he plays, and I think he might, mm -hmm. uh, is he going to still be the same Dalton Schultz? Of course, they'll take all hands on deck as they try to beat a Washington team that McCarthy is watching the game the other day and it's yeah. 24 to nothing or whatever. And he goes, it's, this just doesn't feel like a 24 nothing game. These Reds, yeah. the, this, this Washington team seems pretty good. Yeah. Well, we'll find out if McCarthy is right or wrong. I think he hopes he's wrong mm -hmm. as we get ready for the <laughs> Cowboys uh, in week four. Obviously in Washington, yeah. um, there is some hope that uh, the talent that they have will start coming together now in a way that will allow them for starters to block uh, for the quarterback. Yeah. Now Carson Wentz is on record as saying, "Don't don't blame the offensive line for the nine sacks against the Eagles. A lot of that's on me. Huh. Got to get the ball out sooner. Yeah. Uh, got to check down uh, smarter. Uh, sometimes you got to eat it. Yeah. Uh, but nine sacks for Washington. Right. Uh, and their offensive line, battered offensive line, and then they face the Cowboys on the road. And the Cowboys are the number one sack team in the NFL, led by Micah Parsons. Yeah. That is a formula that probably doesn't feel really good right now for Washington coaching staff. Right. As Washington does come to AT&T Stadium to play the Cowboys in week four in an NFC East division matchup, besides that pass rush versus the commander's offensive line, what else are you looking at during this game? Uh, Carson Wentz tried to have his revenge game last week yeah. as he played uh, against the Eagles team that made him a premium draft pick. Yeah. There's supposed to be a clear delineation between if you're a premium first round draft pick quarterback yeah. and you're just some schlub, you're supposed to be able to tell the difference. Yeah. But now let's go back and look at Daniel Jones of the Giants versus Cooper Rush, uh, who figures to be the quarterback again this week, barring some Dak Prescott miracle. Right. To your eye, to my eye, to your eye, was Daniel Jones better than Cooper Rush? Did he look like a better football player? looked about the same kind of the same right um maybe daniel jones runs better more mobile yeah. now here comes carson wentz again premium pick yeah all the pedigree in the world we remind you cowboys fans know this washington fans probably too as well cooper rush uh 2017 undrafted yeah. central michigan no acclaim uh not a huge guy right big enough yeah. uh not a, a fast guy fast enough um, a, a big rocket arm, not particularly, but here he is now, five years later or whatever, and he's looked as good in these two starts as Carson Wentz right. has looked in his game. So th that is a disastrous thought in Washington. You mean that we, we took <laughs> we all this time, much? right? Paid all this t money, took all this time, put all these assets, and we're ending up with a guy that that has gotten cut like a hundred times, yeah. including by the Cowboys, then brought back. <laughs> and the Cowboys get to go, as Mike McCarthy will tell you, you know, he'll whisper it. Maybe it is a little bit coaching. Mm -hmm. Although Cooper Rush and his computer brain, very much respected in that locker room, uh, before Mike McCarthy got here and now with Mike McCarthy here. All the brains coming together uh, to make the Cowboys three and a half point favorites over Washington on Sunday. I love it. The Cowboys defense is getting a lot of attention and deservedly so. As you have covered the Cowboys for many, many years, what makes this defense different than other defenses that you have seen? People want to start comparing this team, this roster, to the 1990s Super Bowl Cowboys. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. <laughs> um, not, not the, the similarities simply don't exist. Yeah. First of all, that team won three Super Bowls in four years, mm -hmm. uh, and and but for the grace of God, could have won. Could have won six Super Bowls in a row. At least that's what they think. Yeah. Um, but Micah Parsons is a uniquely talented guy. There's no question about that. Uh, had Micah Parsons been on the 90s Cowboys, yeah. he would have been a star. But that team, uh, that team had Kevin Smith as the other cornerback. Yeah. And nobody even remembers, the guys on that team do, they, they thought he was as good as Dion, mm -hmm. who everybody recognizes. That team had Charles Haley, special guy. But they had seven defensive linemen who are all pretty special. And then on offense, uh, almost every single cowboy who put on a uniform gets <laughs> Hall of Fame votes. Right. So th this group isn't that, and we shouldn't make that comparison. That's not, that's not fair to this group.